So now let's begin with the discussion of the approach to a unilateral opaque hemithorax. A very short topic this one and pretty straightforward. So if uh, this is the x-ray or the spotter that you're getting, it's, it's you're, you're one of the lucky ones, okay? Because this is uh, relatively straightforward uh, when we compare it with the approach to unilateral hyperlucent hemithorax. So there are two things that we're going to be discussing. So let's begin the with the first one. So this is where we are discussing a case wherein one side of the chest appears much more opaque than the other one and, and here there is no controversy as to which side is abnormal it is obviously the opaque one that's why it's the simple one right so it is definitely this side which is abnormal there is no uh, contesting that so now the only thing that you have to look here is the mediastinum whether the mediastinum is shifted if yes is it ipsilateral shift or is it contralateral shift? That is all that we have to look at here. So in such cases, what you're going to begin with is the usual description that we have learned. You're going to describe the clinical history, the age, the sex of the patient, prior imaging, if any. And then you're going to comment on the technical parameters, that is rotation, inspiration, penetration of the x-ray. And then you start off with the description of the hemithorax, which is abnormal. Like in this case, we can see that there is a white out right sided hemithorax unilateral opaque hemithorax and now look at the mediastinum when we look at the airway you see that there is a contralateral shift you can see that the airway is shifted contralaterally right so definitely the localization is going to be on the right side so such cases the your biggest differential your first differential is going to be a pleural effusion so there is a pleural effusion which is pushing the mediastinum on the opposite side so this is what is a massive pleural effusion because you have the entire homothorax which is pacified so in such cases uh, you know you would do an ultrasound which can definitely confirm the diagnosis so that is one the other remote differential that you may want to keep lower down is going to be a hernia so rarely a diaphragmatic hernia can come up if the bubble loops are not distended with air you might see it as an opaque hemithorax which is going to result in contralateral shift so the other possibility is a diaphragmatic hernia very remote possibility so here only if the Ask you tell what else can it be then you go on to hernia otherwise that story ends at a massive pleural effusion now let's talk about a mediastinum which has been shifted to the ipsilateral side look at this x-ray here non-rotated adequate penetration and you can see that the patient has taken a good inspiration here what you can see is that the left hemithorax is opaque and i can see that the trachea has been pulled to the ipsilateral side so in such cases where you have ipsilateral shift what are the possibilities to consider obviously when you have ipsilateral shift it means that there is volume loss so two things is it an iatrogenic volume loss or is it collapse so iatrogenic volume loss that you can rule out off the bat with just the history is that of pneumonectomy right so whether if there has been a lung which is removed there is surgery you would see that the ribs have been removed right so you can look at the ribs you can look for surgical clips and most important you can just ask the patient yeah so ribs surgical clips are going to be your clues if you've just been given the x-ray we look for these and we can rule out pneumonectomy if that is not the case we look at a total collapsed lung so when will you have a total collapse when the main bronchus is obstructed so the two most common causes you know if it's a child you want to rule out a foreign body aspiration which has obstructed the main bronchus leading to total collapse if it's an emergent case acute uh, respiratory distress in a child you rule out a foreign body if it's an adult elderly smoker male you rule out a malignancy right so there could be a complete endobronchial obstruction by a ca lung resulting in total collapse so these are the two most common dds there could be other things like a granuloma there could be a mucus plug right so those will be your other dds that you rule out for bronchial obstruction it could be a carcinoid right so collapse we've discussed in detail so the different causes so foreign body carcinoma will be your most common causes the other causes as we know you rule out a granuloma yeah you rule out a mucus plug so these will be your other DDs, you rule out a carcinoid. A typical carcinoid may be inside the bronchus leading to complete collapse. This is something which is very, very important. 
two other dds you know that you have to keep here in cases of ipsilateral shift are going to be agenesis or pulmonary hypoplasia so either a pulmonary agenesis or a pulmonary hypoplasia is what you consider lower down okay so these are your two big ones for the history you know in the exam and then you have agenesis hypoplasia that you should also consider here a ct can really help you when you see that the pulmonary arterial trunk is absent that is where you know you will have agenesis hypoplasia being confirmed so here in this case if there is no cause of collapse or if they ask you what will be your next step we would go ahead with a cct which would help us in knowing the cause of collapse as well as looking at the status of the pulmonary artery to basically say whether it's agenesis so this is how you will approach with this so this can be given to you as a long case where this is the x-ray and then we are taking it forward from there and you will be taken in this direction and there may be agenesis hypoplasia or there may be proximal interruption of the pulmonary artery on the CT scan, right? So, this is what we will discuss under case discussions. So, this is our ipsilateral shift. Now, to the next one where there is no shift of the mediastinum. In such cases, uh, very unlikely that you have complete opacification or you can have something like this case where you know you have a lobar opacification with no mediastinal shift. So, you consider a consolidation which could be a pneumonia, it could be pulmonary edema. So, consolidation pulmonary edema where you will have no mediastinal shift because it is nothing but alveolar opacification, right? So, this is one DD. The other possibility that, that you can rule out from an ultrasound is that there is pleural effusion which is completely opacifying and then there is associated component of a secondary collapse, right, which is causing the mediastinum to be in place because one is pushing and one is pulling and the mediastinum stays put. So, this is the other commoner possibility where you have a complete whiteout with no mediastinal shift and very rarely there could be a large tumor in the lungs, more commonly it could be in the chest wall and that is why it is opacifying the entire hemithorax, it is appearing opaque but then there is no mediastinal shift. So, pulmonary or a chest wall tumor occupying the complete hemithorax will be lower down just to complete the list. So, this is about uh, the approach to unilateral opaque hemithorax. So, in, in summary, all you have to do is look at the mediastinal shift and take it from there. So, pretty systematic, pretty straightforward. Uh, case if you get this one. All the best. Thank you.